on March 18th, he's fighting Donovan Razor Ruddock in Las Vegas. Here's a taste of what this man does when he goes to work. Long in there tonight. All determination. Sails him with the right hand. to able to thin that one up. His legs are totally shot. Just barely grazes him with the left hand. He can hand Mike. Stewart trying to hang on to the head. Tyson is just been to me. Catches him with another left hook and another left hook. It's all Tyson here in round number one. 53 seconds remaining in the first round. Tyson can smell the kill. And he's going after it. Wild with the right hand as Mikey catches him with a hook. He's down. And it's all over. Iron Mike Tyson. What's up, man? Hey, I'm just hanging, man. Just hanging. Does it bother you that that you about to fight a man named Razor? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Nah. <laughs> now, you probably read some of the stuff in the press. Uh, a lot of people are saying that you ducked this guy. You really didn't want to fight this guy. Address that. Yeah, I mean that's that's silly. You know, what I mean, picture me not wanting to fight some human being. But the fact that it was, I was sick, you know, what I mean, and I was sick. And regardless of the fact if I could afford him or not, or my condition, you know, what I mean, I wasn't a hundred percent. Yeah, is he a good fighter? Yeah, he's a good fighter. But you aren't worried, are you? I'm not worried about losing to him. A guy like Razor Ruddick, uh, how do you approach that kind of fight? You know, he's a good fighter, basically. He, he moves, he jabs. You know what I mean? Basically, I'm just going to take it right to him. He's going to find out what he's really made of. How many rounds should I plan on? I'm not a predictor, but you know what I mean? I'm going to take it to him. We're going to find out if he's bad as everyone says he is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you study the game. You watch films and videos and stuff of the past fighters? Yeah, I know a little about the game. And when you when you look at old stuff, what do you look at? I mean, you just look basically at the mentality of them. You know what I mean? Because basically, people in general think there's the styles make fights, which I don't agree. I believe it's mostly morality. You know what I mean? You can have the perfect style to beat this guy, but this guy's tenacity and, and his ferociousness, and he wants it bad enough, he overcomes and overlooks basic all styles, or whatever. You know what I mean? It's basically, I believe, I believe personally, when there's two men fighting, there's only you know what I mean, the battle of wills and skills, unless the skill is so overwhelming normally advanced in the guy's will, then it's a different. But, you know what I mean, it's all about who wants it more. Like you say, the best um, the talk show host is probably in jail or probably taking care of his girlfriend because <laughs> she got her pregnant or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the person who wants it more. You know? <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy named Ice Pick Carson who could wear me out somewhere, you know? <laughs> but he's in jail, you know? Uh, the night Buster Douglas fought and lost, um, where were you? Um, I was training for a fight as well. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched the fight. And what were you thinking while you were watching him out of shape, ill-prepared, on the canvas? Well, I was saying basically, you know, in a situation like that, more or less you run into situations, you run into comedians, you, for example, one night. Stop they, using they me in this, no, man. Leave me out. You, you can relate okay. to it better when I okay. use you. Okay. Okay. I'm sure you've seen a comedian for one night. Mm -hmm. He rose to the occasion. He was humble. You talk about God. Then every yeah. time you see him after that, he's a dud. What yeah. happened? He used the same lines every day. Yeah. And I should like, they're not thoroughbred. They can't last through the storm. They can only get up one night. Maybe another night, a year from now, 10 years from now, he'll get up again. But, you know what I mean? Those guys don't last long. They get a big bubble and they get a nut and they score. But other than that, you know what I mean? The only thing that matters is longevity. I mean, yeah. people, there's been people with talk, talk shows, you know, f people that we know, I don't know if I mention their names, I don't want, they, 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 they host the show for a little while, then boom, canceled. Yeah. They're yeah. not around no more, just like fighters, they bubble bust. Yeah. Um, are you angry at yourself for letting that happen, the situation with Buster Douglas? You. I'm not even angry at myself, I'm angry because I didn't allow myself to be in that position. I mean, of believing, you know, because you write your own um, press clip and you write yourself that you write, well, maybe I am invincible, you know what I mean? Then you slack when you take your skills for granted 
perhaps, you know what I mean? But, you know what I mean, more or less, you know what I mean, that I'm, I'm happy because my whole um, theory about people in general, because, you know, you read these stories and people tell you, yo, you treat me like this now, but when you lose, nobody will be in your locker room but me, me, me. But it wasn't like that. When I went through that situation, around 30,000 people were at the airport. They came, and I was like, oh, I didn't want to see them. I was like, God, God, get away. People would call, and I found out a lot about myself in a situation like that. People would call just to see how I was doing. You know, nobody was calling and asking, oh, I got bad bills. Can you help me pay my bills, turn my lights on, or something crazy like that? Mm -hmm. They called, I'm caring and concerned, and me feeling that way because I never was in that position before. So at that um, level, so I, I would never talk to people. You know what I mean? Because I used to want the pity. I, used to, I, and I said, you know, you walk it like you talk it. Regardless, if you fall in your butt, you just get back up. Yeah, your no mistake, man should be pitied. Yeah, your mistake with Buster, did you make it in the ring and in training? Did you did you slack up on training too? Absolutely. Basically, it's all behavior and how you think. Life in general, like, again, I don't mean to deter, like a talk show. If you don't study, you know what I mean? It's just part of behavior. You just you get by one night, then you feel you can get by everything, but you're deteriorating yourself little by little. Mm -hmm. And it's all, like, I, discipline is another word, but it's just behavior, the way you conduct yourself. Yeah. I saw your baby as I was about to walk on. Uh, has that changed your life a lot and made you a better person? Like, I'm going to do one Johnny Carson. Like, that is wild. <laughs> is that wild? Like, when you see that kid? Yeah, yeah ah, and it looks just wild. like you. Wow. That was an awful Johnny Carson impression. What? No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do That's impressions. That's why I'm on your show, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's made you happier and, and changed your whole existence. So. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You really can't explain it because you become more or less um, under the weather. Like, you don't know how to respond to it. It's like it's your first experience. And you, you know what I mean? It's take me and, and then sometimes, like, he's out the house and he's sleeping. My friends come on and they knock on the door. I say, yeah, man, cool out. My son's sleeping. I'm like, holy Christ, I got a son. I believe I said that. Yeah. <laughs> you named the baby after someone very special. Yeah, yeah I did because... Um, it was it was a lot more than just him teaching me how to fight and just throw a punch. It was more of a independence. You know, I mean, his main objective. Because like, many times when you're young, because I started fighting young, many times you okay, quit. For those who don't know what we're talking about, let's explain to them who, who this figure is in your All life. Right, Custom Otto, who was a gentleman who adopted me when I was approximately 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And the theory was I wanted to have, I said, when my first child I get after he passed away, I said, I'm going to name my son after him. Mm -hmm. To show him the respect I had for him because of the fact that he always wanted me just to have independence, more than money, more than just to be the champion. He said, if I make you champion, you know what I mean, I'm, you know, I made you champion, but I want to make you independent when you don't need anybody no more, when you can handle your own business, when you can handle yourself. And then that's the main objective. Like, everybody needs independence yeah, for yeah. themselves. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a little commercial. We'll come back and talk some more. Yeah, we'll talk some more. That way. We were just here talking about Mike Tyson as a father. <laughs> that would make you study, wouldn't it? Are you a tough father? Yeah, I'm <laughs> a tough father. Wow, but see, it's good you have a little boy. But you'll probably have a girl one day. You want a girl? Man, I, mean, I, don't, I don't want no more kids. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to another You got to deal with those mothers, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you having problems with his mom? No, he has a, he has a great mother, but you know what I mean? Problems do occur, and I, like you say, with relationships, you know what I mean? It's just difficult. I mean, I'm, I'm good to have a, as a companion or something, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? As far as like a relationship, as a boyfriend, husband, I, I'm just not, I'm not cut out, you know what I mean? You, just, you should just be my companion. We just hang out a lot and go places, <laughs> and let me be nice to you, yeah. let me go where I got to go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Only half the audience. Clapped. I know. I'm not, I'm not looking for any applause. I'm just telling you how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they know. know too. Yeah. And and even the ones that didn't clap smiled at you because it's Mike Tyson. You know, it's like yes, Mr. Tyson. Um, <laughs> what's the biggest misconception about Mike Tyson? Um, basically that I'm irate. I mean, I mean, that it's easy for me to get upset and bathe and, and perhaps because of uh, my occupation, people basically think that I'm cold, you know what I mean? But it's not true, but my main objective, and people in general, and people think I'm abusive to women for some crazy reason. Mm -hmm. Only what? What abuse? I beat them up with um, 
hundred thousand dollar gifts and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm abusive. Um, <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Um, it's just ridiculous. The only thing my main concern is, you know, what I mean, I just want people, my peers, as far as um, the fighters concerned, because really that's a big point. Just, that's really what counts. You know, I mean, what your peers, they, peers understand what it takes to get it to that pinnacle of success. The people that's fighting and he's not champ yet and he's just a top. He said, God, it's hard to get in. This guy's up there and he was only 18, 19 years old. He's on the top of his game. He said, God, I've been doing this for 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's the respect that they understand because they're reaching for that goal. Just like an, a young actor and, or else. Or talk to a host. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? How do you do that, actually? What the hell do you do? Yeah, show me. I got good jokes, but how do you get them across? The guy said, Mike, I've been fighting all my life, but how do you win? Yeah. <laughs> how do you win? Yeah. Um, when you leave the boxing game, what do you want to do? I've seen you in everybody's video. You in every video, Mike. <laughs> I saw you in well, like, uh, Ice T's video, and right after that, they played uh, Jazzy Jeff Fresh Prince video. You was in that. And there was Liza Minnelli video. You in that. You in everybody's video. What are you going to do? You going to get in show business? No, I, you know, I don't know. Like People offer me um, parts of my, like a story. And say, but, you know, I'm not interested. Um, I like the children. You know, I probably want to be a, a, a foster parent or something. But I was working in a retarded institution. Like, I used to like hanging out with the guys. They're pretty cool, the kids. Yeah. Would, you, uh, would you like to take young fighters and teach them the things uh, that Cuss used to teach you? I, I wouldn't want to, I'd probably be a horrible trainer, per se. Like, kids are going to the ring, get, whoosh, get smashed. Yeah. But I'm talking about, I would like, you know, I mean, to talk to fighters or something. Just tell me, you know, I mean, it's more than, you know what I mean? Because everyone's not going to be the best fighter in the world. Everyone's not going to be the best basketball player. But just to take the, the drive that you have, and you could be anything. You could be a nuclear scientist. You could be anything, you know what I mean? And just always never give up. Because as long as you're alive, you can always accomplish something. You just never give up. You never give up. In many situations, you want to give up. Never give up. Never let no one put that upon you that you must give up. You know what I mean? That life is the end, that you want to hurt yourself or kill yourself because nothing's that important. And anybody that strives and work hard, you know, even though it seems harder, but as long as you're working, you know what I mean? Something's going to happen. You'll always have more than what you started off with. Yeah. Uh, Don King was here and he said that George Foreman would beat Evander Holyfield. Do you believe that? I really don't believe that personally. I don't believe that, no. Um, how should Evander approach the fight? He's just, the way he fights, he'll run around, he'll wait to catch with a clean shot, and then once he hurt him, he'll probably throw a bunch of punches and knock the old guy out. <laughs> but then again, I've been wrong many times on fights. I've been more wrong. When was the last time you were wrong? Um, the last fight I picked uh, was Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, with, with Mr. Norris. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, let's talk to Evander again, because I know he's watching. How should Evander approach the fight between Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson? Just leave the titles in the ring and give them to me and stay home. <laughs> Come on, it won't be that easy. Yeah, I'm not saying, but you know what I mean? It, it wouldn't be a win for him. And I respect Evander. I respect him also because it's a great Christian belief. But, you know what I mean, um, this is our business, and unfortunately, it's the hurt business. So, you know what I mean, in a business like this, people say you're cold and, and oblivious to people's feelings. It's not true. It's just that, you know I mean, you have to be very uh, unemotional. You just have to be unemotional. I'm no, you know me very well. I'm no barbaric maniac, but, you know, no. just... You give $100,000 gifts. Yeah. <laughs> I could be a sucker. No. No, no. No, I think no. you've just, like no. any other man, been in love. Many of times. Yeah. Yeah. And you shop too quick. I told you that. You 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 gotta wait just a little bit. You told me to shop around, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't say for her. I said for you, shop around. You know. No, you're just a, you're just a very generous man. But um, so how are you gonna fight Evander? When you come into the ring, what's gonna be on your mind? Yeah, basically, the way I fight is to take it to him. I just want you know. I mean, basically, you know. I mean, I I just oppose my will upon somebody. I just, you know. What I mean. If you win, you know what I mean, he's got to see you be a better man, which I doubt. But I'm, I'm just, I just want to strive on it. I want to win, you know what I mean? People like, my friends, like, you know what I mean, back home, they just don't understand it. Like, we're all young, we hang out, and we like to go to clubs, you know what I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> but, you know, you don't understand, I'm a very serious individual when it comes to my job. Like, they'll probably go home and they go to work or do whatever else. They're rich kids and they're spoiled brat. But I'm a very serious individual. And the last time you lost your serious attitude towards your work, something bad happened. Yeah, so you probably really learned this. Yeah, I was really on my butt, grabbing for my mouthpiece.
Yeah. When you watch that moment, what do you think about? Do you, do you watch that fight? Yeah. Hey, just learn the experience. I don't take it personal. Yeah. I gotta watch it. You know what I mean? You can't take it. Once you take something personal and you get involved emotionally, you can no longer perform on the high level that you normally perform because you're involved with the situation. There's some guys that never, like if you're mad, you could be 100 pounds and you, you could see um, guys like um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and those guys. The little guy, he'll get mad, so he's emotional. He's mad, so he'll fight him. He don't care. Mm -hmm. Once you, if you're in the ring with somebody, this guy never did anything to you. How do you fight this guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? You can. Suppose all of a sudden now, oh, I'm mad, I'm going to get him. You're already in a fight, so what? You're mad. What do you do? You're already in a fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for coming by and talking, man. Hey, I really see. appreciate it. And continued success. Good luck, man. We'll be back with Lucy Arnett.